Hey everybody, it's Tony Schiavone of All Elite Wrestling, and this is True Hill Heat, and I said it right, you motherfuckers. Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom, SP3. We are back once again with an end of year list. This time, True Hill Heat's top 10 best promos of 2022 i am here with what many of you call the best promo on true hill heat youtube channel <laughs> the best talker the most controversial uh anytime he says anything on our channel we literally have a disclaimer for him he is the man of forty-seven thousand subscribers jimmy mackerel hello one and all promo time i'm excited not as excited as i was Nine minutes, 31 seconds ago, but I am <laughs> excited. <laughs> to, to pull back the curtain to why Jimmy just said that <laughs> is that there was one promo on our list that he had to watch before we could, and can, you know, could accurately talk about the top 10 best promos voted on by you and us here at True Hill he and the friends of the channel uh this this is our top 10 list uh by 30 nominations and he had to watch one of the promos and he was not very happy with having to watch it after adamantly saying he wouldn't to the point I wanted the to to show it to the people give the people what they want and watch your reaction to it but he wouldn't even agree to that so he just agreed to watch it and yeah <laughs> it sucks the excitement out of it. <laughs> but we will get to that. Just remember, folks, we appreciate all of you for watching these end of year videos. Show your appreciation back. Drop the thumbs up on the video. Share this video with all your wrestling fans, friends, and family on all your favorite social media platforms. If you are new to the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to stay notified for all the great content here. And like I said at the top, this is a list voted on by the subscribers, the Patreon backers, friends of the channel, as well as the contributors you usually see on screen here. This is our list, True Hill Heat's list. This is not the list. So if you believe we missed out on a promo that deserved to be on the top 10, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, I did want to go through a couple of these honorable me mentions that we got here first, uh, okay. Jimmy, before we get into the top 10. Uh, we had with five points in the honor roll mentions uh, Bloody Punk after MJF attacked him on the go-home show to Revolution. It was on an episode of Rampage right before Revolution uh, following CM Punk getting jumped by the pinnacle and left bloody after believing MJF's whole origin story the week prior. He got beat down and hung with the dog collar and cut this fiery promo in the trainer's room, how he was ready for the dog collar match and everything. So that made our list. Uh, this was a late entry, but got four nominations, but only seven points. So people were in very high on it. Ricky Starks on MJF on the December 7th edition Paint of ass? Uh, uh, AEW Dynamite. Yes, Paint Thinner and Ass made <laughs> uh, in our honorable mentions. Uh, we also got this one had one first place vote, but only seven points overall. So it just missed out on the cut here. Uh, Dax Hardwood, fight like an eight year old girl. Uh, on that, that promo, that fired up promo. We also got another one that had a first place vote was Becky Lynch uh, on the March 21st edition of Raw, where she kind of talked about how she had to sell her soul and how the fans chose Bianca over her. And that's why she is, she's determined to defeat Bianca at WrestleMania. Just a that sounds like before. a great idea, though. You can't buy it. You just Sorry. I know the history, so no, you left. To have a baby, that's what happened. You, you left <laughs> the fans still love you. That's why that's why I wasn't very high on that promo, uh, as everybody else was, but somebody else was, and they gave it a first place nod, actually. And then this final honorable mention, uh, I was I was it's what this was dangerously close of joining our top 10. Uh oh Jimmy CM Punk brawl out, uh the CM Punk all out media scrub got <laughs> nine points. Not, no, one, no one gave it first place votes, but every, a couple of people enough. It got four nominations, nine points. To be fair, he catches quite a few bodies in that promo. He's fuck. He goes off. Everybody can get it. 
Is that empty head? Is empty headed dumb fuck in there? Yes. Yeah. That's and not even like empty headed dumb fuck. Hangman Adam Page, hang, uh, 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 empty headed dumb fuck. He says he exposes Coke Cabana for sharing a bank account with his mother. Uh, yes. He. I'm, saying, I'm all... saying that. Y'all be trying to. To, to taint the facts, shares a bank account with his mother like it's a wholesome thing. Hides money by putting it in his mom's bank account. That's the word you're looking for. Okay. <laughs> he, he said the EVPs couldn't manage, manage a target. Um, <laughs> see, we're, trying to, we're trying to build a million dollar company here. These guys acting like we're still in Messina. Um, so, yes, some great stuff. In Old that, and hungry but I wouldn't. Board. That is a prepared promo, I will say. Though. So, <laughs> so, so, okay, fair enough. It makes it. It was the highest of our honorable mentions. But let's get into the top ten here, Jimmy. With five nominations, ten points, we have Cody Rhodes' first promo on Monday Night Raw on the Raw after WrestleMania thirty eight. And yes, this is the promo that me and Jimmy watched before we started recording this. And he was disgusted with this making our list. Jimmy, explain why. It's, 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 listen, it's a, I'm going to, in a vacuum, we'll say, in a vacuum. It's a fine promo in and of itself. But it's just so, I've seen him be heavy handed before. So it's hard for me to buy into the like genuineness of it. When I know that you're always this fucking bombastic, we'll say. You remember when Hogan was trying to talk? I forgot what promo it was. But they were so loud. He kept like, I we were trying to talk, pointing at the microphone. It's like, you're being so dramatic. And like, there's not even that much noise going on here with Cody. And he's still being just as dramatic. I'm just like, yawn. Yawn. It's just fine. That's part of it with Seth Rollins, to be honest. I mean, Seth Rollins was, was great coming out, dancing. With his pet no biz uh jacket. But I th- I think I think Cody, you know, he always shows a good range of emotion. Uh he, oh, he certainly he, does. The Cody comes, Rhodes and Matt Jackson school of acting. He usually comes off like a youth pastor and he does a little <laughs> bit here in this promo. But I like the stuff about you know his dad, and that's the reason why he came back for the WWE championship. Like he gave too, yeah. It gave him like a mission statement for why he's coming back for the fans to follow along and to rally behind him. So I thought this was a good promo, a good start to Cody in WWE as as far as on the mic. That's a good way to put it. I like it uh, as a promo. I don't like it as a potential promo of the year. That sounds outrageous. Well, let's talk about number nine and see if you're less, you're less, uh, you think it's less egregious here. Coming in at number nine on four nominations, so one less than our, our number 10, but 13 points. So people were very high on it on the ones that did vote for it. We got Seth Rollins, Matt Riddle's sit down, uh, interview here. On Monday Night Raw, prior to Clash at the Castle, where uh, Seth Rollins basically pulls Danny, the Daniel Cormier, uh, John Jones sit-down interview and calls out Matt Riddle for his uh, his whole family not and wanting to face. see him, being a deadbeat dad, and uh, Riddle is pissed. He starts cursing. This is this was this is when you realize that okay, this is a different WWE. This is, uh, this is yeah. one of two promos. I feel like another promo that should have been in our honorable mentions is Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens. Uh, when uh, Drew McIntyre says, we are wrestlers in a yeah. wrestling ring. Let's wrestle. <laughs> I, that just sounds so <laughs> badass and so strange in WWE to hear that. That was the first one. And then this one where you just had that, that, that kind of just authentic feel. It felt like it was kind of improv and it wasn't planned out. I loved it. I love this promo. I think it was one of the better WWE promos of the year for sure. Jimmy, what's your thoughts on it? Can you put Matt Riddle's face back up? Um, like, listen, I, he also went to the Cody Rhodes, Matt Jackson school of acting. Like, let's just <laughs> make an angry face. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I, I've heard stuff about him. Apparently he is having a blast of his life. So I get it. He doesn't have much to be mad about. He's doing cocaine and fucking porn stars. Enjoy your life, sir. No need to be mad about anything. Um, but I did enjoy this. I, I thought it was well done. Seth is really good at that. He comes across like a scumbag. You know, here's a good guy, apparently. Um, it worked for me. It worked for me a lot. And I love that Cormier Jones promo. 
because John Jones is a legit psychopath. Legit, <laughs> legitimate. Him talk this is good. This is true. This is this is blatantly uh, <laughs> true. Uh, yes, I, I, I liked I liked how they built up this rivalry to kind of feel very very personal going into a clash at the castle, and then they had their follow up the fight pit match at Extreme Rules. But this right here was the, the kind of their best work that really led to kind of people paying attention to the feud and getting behind it in a little in a big way. So let's go on to number eight, Jimmy. This one I know you're familiar with here. It comes Ooh. in with five nominations, 16 points, including one first place vote. You got Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho's face-to-face -face meeting in February on AEW Dynamite that set up their matchup at Revolution. Uh, Eddie calling out Jericho for holding back Santana and Ortiz. Uh, Jericho basically uh, kind of calling Eddie Kingston uh, I, and always a guy that can't win the big one that always comes up short. It was kind of the poor man's version of Kingston and Punk's uh, promo from oh, yeah. last year. But I will say that it definitely it definitely made people uh, more engaged into that rivalry going into Revolution here. So I, I'm glad that Eddie Kingston promo is on our list. Me personally, I would go with the uh, pre Double or Nothing promo where he's like, "Tony God, you can stop this." That that one is my favorite where he talks about his addiction mm. and talks about how Jericho gets him back to that feeling. That one is more more my bag, but I did I did like this face-to-face -face promo and I remember that we both we both very much enjoyed it. When was the uh promo where Santana looks at the camera starts laughing? Oh, that would that I think that was either right before this or after this one. I it's believe this was that was yeah, this was after this because the heel turn has to happen. Um, I probably enjoyed it. It has more. to be, I think it has to be before then because that that promo segment I believe set up the the uh tag match when it was Santana and Ortiz versus Jericho and uh someone else, yeah, Jericho and Hager, right? Because Santana hemmed them up, right? Yeah, um, that is and then this promo it. happens after. Gotcha. I like that promo. I like this one. Uh, the fact that you said February and we're now wrapping up Jericho and BCC slash um, Kingston and them. Um, 11 months. 11 months. Um, this promo was fine. Uh, Eddie is always uh, realistic in his promo tell, I will say. And Jericho, when he tones it down, can kind of match him with the feel of it. I enjoyed it. Not their, either their best work. But I, I enjoyed it. I have no complaints about being on the list. Yeah, Kingston uh, says it wasn't about proving to Chris Jericho if I was a loser or a winner or whatever you want to call it. It was about proving it to myself. I can sit here and I can act all tough and hard and be like, yeah, I knew I was going to win. Yeah. Oh, no, that's the promo after Revolution. Right. Actually. That, that, that one, that one I also, I also uh, enjoy a lot. But uh, this one, this one, I thought it was very intense. It was on an, it was during the whole time where like, you know, you had CM Punk and MJF cutting, cutting great promos during their rivalry. This was kind of the, where, where the peak was for AEW going into revolution and then the slow. Decline. Yeah. Went down. And then Kingston won that match. And then he went on to main event stardom for the rest of the year, obviously. Unfortunately, that did not happen, folks, and uh, barbed wire everywhere did. Uh, coming <laughs> in at number seven here, we're going up in nominations. This one had at seven had seven nominations, including one first place vote, 20 points overall. We got John Moxley's return promo on AEW oh, Dynamite yeah. from January, uh, where he tells the, the guy in the crowd, get that guy the fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, uh, this, this promo, I know you are you are polarizing, uh, to say the least, about it. Give us your thoughts and coming in at number seven here. All right, to be fair. First of all, you don't know how so much weight somebody gains, like – until you see him, he's so skinny in that picture. Like he's off the road, fucking feeling great, and then back on the road again. Just ugh, it's rough. Um, listen, I know you all. It, it, I wasn't polarizing. I liked the promo. 
But that was you all were lost your minds. You all loved the promo. You I love thought it. it was the promo of a lifetime. I just liked the promo. I as far as John Moxley promos goes, it's not even in my top 15. You can pull up a, a promo at random from his title reign, and I would enjoy that one more. It's just I do. Like I get it. Life sucks. He's had a hard go of it more than most. Okay. That doesn't make what you're saying particularly interesting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was interesting. It was interesting, yes. Oh, but that's it. It's just and I, the the my my favorite line of it is all I drink now is blood. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the difference here. This is John Moxley in him. January during this promo. This was John Moxley <laughs> last week on AEW. <laughs> What's going on with his hair in the first one? Like maybe I don't know. Like is it lack of stress? Feet? Beard is a little bushier. He's got the puffy cheeks. He must be on the road too much. On vacation? Hands <laughs> are on vacation. Uh, there's nothing but garbage to eat around. Yeah. Poor on bastard. vacation? Can't go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trying to get Renee? Got Renee. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great call. Great call. Great call right We've all been there, sir. I, I enjoyed this promo. John Moxley, I think, is, had so many great promos. I will say this is one that did stand out though from the from the year. I felt I felt I felt like if it's if, if John Moxley was going to make this list, it was either going to be this promo or the the Hangman back and forth or the the a, what AEW stands for. Actually, that would be my favorite the the, the, the post the post a all out promo. That that oh, felt like yes. I'm the flag bearer. I'm the ace here. Boom! This is what AEW. I, I might he, felt, he felt like Sting in WCW or Austin in WWF type of vibes. See, I would go with the I would go with the other. I would go with um the match after he beat Punk, the promo after he beat Punk rather, where he's oh. like, "I told you." What happened to your boy? It was just like, yo, he's on. Oh, I love that fucking promo. <laughs> Great stuff. Coming in at number six, Jimmy, we got with nine nominations, including two first place votes, 22 points overall, two up from our previous entry. CM Punk, will you be my Valentine? <laughs> Challenging MJF to the dog collar match at AEW Revolution. Talking about how MJF bringing out the picture of him and MJF when MJF was a kid and saying that this was the greatest day of your life. For me, it was just a Friday. <laughs> and, and, and for me, uh, he says, uh, for at Revolution, you know, it's going to be the biggest match of your, career, of your career. For me, it's going to be just another Sunday. <laughs> this, is, this was CM Punk in his bag. And I'm glad this is on this list. Yes, yes, this is the first one where I would thought exactly. How is this not on the fucking list? CM Punk, I don't know how everybody's pretending he was just a guy now. CM Punk was amazing for most of his run, except when he was wasting with Matt Sidella. Uh, yeah, that's not the point. We're talking about the promo. Talking about the promo right here. That's what we're talking about. Promo was great. All this promo was going to MJF were great. This one in particular was really good. Whenever Punk holds court, sits in the middle of the ring and decides this is his kingdom, he's going to do what he wants, he's so good. I really hope he comes back. He's so good. I hope he comes back too. Uh, Dax Harwood ha had a uh, uh, his podcast, his first podcast episode, where he talked about talking to CM Punk after All Out and talking about how CM Punk was very joyous backstage and enjoyed the locker room. And you know, he tried to explain to him, you know, what happened after All Out, and he said everything had been settled down. So it, this has people hopeful because Dax then ended the podcast with a plea saying that. He pleads to all four guys to work it out because what they can do if they're able to work it out and make this into a work is he said it can change the landscape of professional wrestling. And he said it could set people up making a living for the next 20, 30 years. Jesus fucking Christ. Dax is another one. He does it right. Cody does it wrong. Dax can also be bombastic. Uh, none of that is true. <laughs> None of that is true. There's nothing CM Punk and Omega can do to set people up for 20 years, except maybe themselves. So that's about it. Um, but I do want them to go back. I do want to see that promo in that match. Oh man, that's hilarious. That for 20 years changed the business. What are we even talking about? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> if we haven't changed the business yet, it's not gonna happen. So that's all. <laughs> 
<laughs> they have changed the business. They have not. Saying? I love oh, Bogle. Oh, what are you? I love CM about? Punk. I love CM Punk. No. It's, and Kenny Omega is definitely he's a part of creating AEW that changed the business. You know, okay, you know what? I'll give him that. How much how much credit do you want to give Kenny Omega for that? What's the percentage we're giving Kenny Omega? We got Omega the Bucks. We got to split it four ways. Omega the Bucks and Cody. Cody and Tony Khan. And, and Khan and Tony Khan. And his dad. It's his money. How many different ways are you splitting this? I give all right, I'll give him 10% credit for helping change the business hey, of some There's five people. There's five people. We ain't counting Shad. Shad. Why? It's my money. <laughs> it's my dumb son running around here. <laughs> Anywho, let's go to number. I don't know how we even got here, folks. <laughs> but that's what happens when me and Jimmy start talking. Coming in at number five here. We have went 14 nominations. Now we're going up more in the numbers here. 39 Jesus. points overall. So no first place votes, but 39 points. People were high on this one. You got Sami Zayn becomes officially <laughs> the honorary Oos on SmackDown, the September third, 23rd edition of SmackDown. This one just has so many great stuff. You got Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman cutting a great promo about Logan Paul first. Then they then it goes into Sami Zayn making his pitch to officially become a uh, you know honorary ooze and acknowledge the big dog. Then you got uh he's wearing the old bloodline shirt, so you got Jay ripping off the shirt all via- violently for after the after the request of Roman, and then Roman presents him with the honorary ooze shirt, the big hug, and Jay Uso's face during it all is what is like the cherry on top. This is one of the best WWE segments I have ever seen, honestly. Jimmy, what's your thoughts on this? We're completely on the fucking same page. I can't believe the performance is going on here. Uh, Roman can come across as so scary. Um, so kind of calmly threatening. Take our shirt off. Sammy's face, like, is he joking? Jay loses his fucking mind and rips it off. And it's Sammy's face afterwards, like, I'm about to get fucked up, but my hands are up. I'm not fighting anybody. Please don't fuck me up. And then the, it's just so beautiful afterwards. And Jay's face. I'm sorry. I crack up laughing every time I see it. His fucking... <laughs> <laughs> like, like, this, like this nigga over here. Face. Oh, that's so good. That is an all-timer. I wasn't watching yeah. SmackDown and I, I heard about it and watched it and then watched it again. That was amazing. <laughs> I love them. It, 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 it's chef's kiss. It, it is magical what they've been able to do with Sami Zayn in the bloodline and a lot of it kind of being firing on all cylinders because it was good for a while and then this segment happened and then it's been firing on all cylinders. <sighs> ever since. Get Paul him in the pen, please. Absolutely. Coming in at number four, with 10 nominations, so four less than number six, oh, but damn. three three first place votes, 40 points overall, MJF and William Regal. I'll send I send you a tape, send me your stuff. Uh, <laughs> and the and the infamous email, basically the MJF origin story 2.0. As he talks about his WWE tryout and William Regal saying that he was fond of him, but he was too young and to send him his stuff, keep sending him stuff. He did for a couple of months. And then William Regal saying that when you're one of the best in the world, then send me your stuff. And uh, that hip on his shoulder, creating the man that is MJF. And then you also had William Regal saying, Sunshine, if an email is going to do that to you, then, then good luck. You, 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 you got off easy, basically. <laughs> and uh, telling, telling MJF to attack him and stuff. This one, I'm glad it's on this list. What about you? Uh, I You ran it back for me, and I thought it was really too high. But you know what? Maybe I put it a little lower, but I, I really like this promo. I, I love how MJF is like a TV show, and every season you get a flashback to a different part of his backstory. First, it was him getting quarters or whatever the fuck thrown at him as a young Jewish man, and now it's his fucking being shot on by William Regal. All right, can't wait for next season. Girl yeah, for real, for real. I want to. I want to know <laughs> what happened in the gap 
between when he was 12, 13, beating CM Punk, or or what what was he what he said? 17, 18 when Punk left the business. Right. And then what happened between then, you know, him training and everything and 19? <laughs> because he has to have another grudge in those four year gap. I was in an ROH show and I saw Dragon and all right, all right, all right. I try to shake his hand. Right, he's saying, you know what you're doing. That should be the build. I was really, uh, I'm a William Regal fan, so hearing him get booed by all these losers in the crowd bothered me. But of course, I doubted it. I doubted for no reason. William Regal took two seconds, turn all these dummies back around. You had it easy, sunshine. Oh my God, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry we blew you off with a dumbass fucking, if I'm dead, promo. Sorry, sir. To get what you work with amateurs, I don't know what to tell you. Play this if I'm dead, please. <laughs> <laughs> please. Ah, uh, uh, man, but yes, this this deserves to be on this list. The infamous email promo. Uh, yes. coming in at number three. This one back up again. Fourteen nominations, but this one had four first place votes. Ooh. sixty-seven points overall. We're so big time now. Okay, twenty-seven points up. From our, our number four, you got the bloodline <laughs> or Uzi as Sami Zayn uh, uh, and Jay Uso basically discuss their their ongoing dissension and rivalry. And then Jay Uso said, uh, Rome, I mean, Sammy says that they need to get along because Roman wants it. And Jay says, I don't care what Roman wants. And then you got the, the Roman, the great production shot where they zoom in on Roman. <laughs> Popping his head up, and uh, then you got then you got Roman basically scolding uh, Jay, and then him saying that, "Well, you you got to go easy on Jay. He's not feeling very <laughs> pussy." And it literally breaks <laughs> the bloodline. It, everyone is laughing except for Solo Sokoa, basically, who's off camera, but. <laughs> Man, like I, I, I don't know if I put this above the honorary Oos one because that one I feel has like peak performance. But as far as like organic reactions from the performers, this is a an all timer. Yeah, well, according to that, yes. First of all, let me get this clear because I want you getting mad at me. I love this promo. It's probably the, the more rewatchable of the two because I can watch everybody break all day. Uh, Sammy says something that gets Roman to finally crack. He says, oh, it happens to all of us sometimes. And I, I <laughs> and then, and then Jay trying to turn around and Roman going, no, 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 no. Stay right here. Stay right here. If I'm going down, we're all going down. Um, he's, trying to, he's trying to save his life and his, his own cousin pulls him back into the water. Uh, this was great. I got to be honest, though. I'm taking the other one over this one. This one might be more enjoyable, but the other one is just better. It's just amazing. Yeah, this, this one is this I, I I I like that what you said that this one is the more rewatchable. Like I could probably yeah. go back and watch this years later, and it still <laughs> it's still make you laugh. <laughs> yeah. It's great, great stuff. All right, now we got number two Ooh. coming in with fifteen nominations, five first place votes. So one Jeez. first place vote higher than the UC promo. And 70 points overall, so just three more than the UC promo. We got the OG origin story, MJF's origin story <laughs> syndrome, explaining how C he met CM <laughs> Punk and Punk and Punk walking out basically felt like he was walking out on him, and he created the monster that is now haunting CM Punk here in 2022. This was just an amazing performance. I call it the sympathy, sympathy for the devil promo. And CM Punk coming out and his reaction afterwards was is a cherry true? on top. Is that yeah, like, is that true? Is that true? And he's just, that's, that's the nod by, by MJF. It's great. It's just great. Great performance by MJF here. I think it is worthy of being on our list. I don't know about this high, but worthy of being on our list here. What do you uh, think? Same. Uh, what do I want to say? I still feel like this story is out of order. I still feel like this should be the go-home promo. Because um, it makes no sense for him to turn before the match. Um, that aside, I love this promo. Not as much as you all liked it. Because if I remember the next day, you all lost your minds. I think one of you, maybe you, one of you said, 
he'll make a better baby face than a heel. You guys just lost it. You lost it for a day. You saw it. You saw it for a little bit there. He's not bad. No, I can't see Ric Flair is better than baby. No, he isn't. He isn't. He is a heel. He's a brilliant heel. And this was great. It was fun hearing his backstory. And uh, Max, he's dominating. So this was on three times already? Yes. He's great. I have no complaints. This was, that feud, easy to feud of the year for me as far as I'm concerned. I can't even think oh, of anything yeah. else. Oh, yeah. They, it kind of won in a landslide on her. A true year, 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 end of, year end awards. Uh, Max also won best on the mic for our, our year end awards as well. So anyone true heel of the year as well. Wow, look at, look at, you know what? You might have the best of the worst fans here because wrestling fans are all awful. But these might be the best of the bunch. Well, they also they also voted Tony Cobb best booker. See this? You see this? Do you see what I'm t- talking about here? This 930 ass women's division, the BCC, Miro, Andrade. This is the book of the year, huh? Oh, hey, hey, see? hey, they won't I, I, think, I think I think I think it was kind of by default because you had to grade WWE on a full year. If you just graded WWE from July on, they went. But you also have to grade the first six months where they gave us probably the five worst shows of the year if you don't watch NWA or stuff. But again, this isn't promotion of the year. This is book of the year. So it's Vince and H. Triple Triple H came in second. Triple H came in second. You graded all our half a year. I take... You just, whatever, you expunge the numbers. You just assume you do points per game. You don't do total points. <laughs> Jesus you don't win Christ. MVP if you come back at All-Star break. You don't win MVP. That's not you know how what? that works. <laughs> Fine. I'm going to give you another pass. I want to hear this next year. I don't want to hear this next year. Yeah, Thank God. yeah. I, I, this will probably come back in half a year. And, and uh, AEW won promotion of the year. And Dynamite won Best Weekly Show. You know what? Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm just saying. All right, let's get into number one, Jimmy. Coming in at number one, Jimmy. It wasn't even close. Twenty-one. I don't know what it is. Tw- Twenty-one out of thirty nominations. Twelve first place votes. 83 points overall, so well ahead of number two. It's MJF again. It's the MJF <laughs> pipe bomb from the oh, June 1st oof. edition of AEW Dynamite, the infamous promo in front of the Warner Brothers executives following right. Double or Nothing, following the weekend of the contract drama. Will he be there? Won't he be there? Did he get on the plane? Didn't he get on the plane? He talked about it all. Talked about not being paid enough. Be, it, it talked about being on the level of all the ex-WWE guys that, a, that Tony Khan wants to pay. Calling Tony Khan a fucking mark and and basically calling his shot that he needs to be paid like the top star that he is this right led to eventually to his return at all out but man oh man this is this is a this is a definitely a pot bomb promo that if it did if if the mjf contract drama at double or nothing wasn't the first sign of trouble in the AEW water. This was the clear opening of the door of there was trouble going on in AEW. So this promo being number one, I think is very fitting. What do you think? Uh, I totally forgot about this promo. And yes, it's a promo of the year. I just thought about it when we mentioned um what's the last one? MJF one? That was uh, the, origin the, the origin story, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I prefer the fucking pipe bomb this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> does everybody apparently. It's fucking amazing. I I'm trying not to be too biased because he shits on Tony Khan this promo, but um, even without that, it is an objectively great promo. Only part of it I hate is the beginning. This isn't MGF talking. This is Maxwell Friedman. I'm like, oh, that's that's a corny line. Shut up. Get rid of that. Just stop talking. <laughs> he snatches off a scarf. All right, we got it. This is not kayfabe, but whatever you say, sure. Uh, but it was amazing. Everything after that was amazing. I love that promo. 
it's such it's such a great promo. So much passion in it, and it really kind of just said, like, I'm done with this shit. I'm done putting people over. I'm the guy here. Stop, 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 stop not paying me how I'm supposed to be paid. And it's kind of paid off. It was kind of all the reports and stuff that we were hearing kind of just put on screen for us to see. Was there a promoter of the year? No, there wasn't a promoter. Thank God. Thank God. We left our fucking top guy fucking fucking flipping in the wind. Fucking idiot. Have to pay fucking the big show and Mark Henry. And Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. Are we fucking serious? And MJF is about to walk out? You out of your fucking mind? You would be happy to learn that the worst uh, feud of the year was Blackpool Combat Club versus Jericho Appreciation Society. Look at you. Uh, on the uh, sixth annual True Hill Heat Year End Awards, and worst booking decision of the year was not capitalizing on FTR. How did I miss that? I told you, got to bring that up. Fucking egregiousness. We, we didn't bring up Jeff Jarrett or F- Satnam Singh or what they did to Wardlow. Booker of the year, huh? Absolutely. What are we? So I promise. Check, promise. check out the rest of the winners voted on by you and the contributors here of True Hill Heat on the sixth annual True Hill Heat Year End Awards, True Hill Heat 206 with myself, Miss Chrissy Love, and the True Draw Josh from last Saturday, the final True Hill Heat of 2022. Thank everyone for watching our top 10 best promos of 2022. And of course, thank you, Jimmy, for joining me. Please let the people know where they can follow you and what you got going on, sir. Pretty much on Twitter. That's the only place I really uh, social media these days. Uh, at Jimmy Macrum where I shit on as many people as I fucking can. Because these opinions are just fucking awful. It's shocking how many bad opinions there are out there on the interweb. <sighs> I'm okay. You see Booker T said about AEW fans being awful? I've been I trying mean, to tell him. Mean, you could kind of say that about all the things. All right. I do. I've been saying yeah, I know. For years now. He doesn't. He is <laughs> he's very biased. That's why he's Uncle Booker T. Wow. And you know what the T stands for. Uh... Just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, you can follow me on the Twitter machine at True Hill SP3. Follow the gang, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at True Hill Heat. Also, subscribe to the True Hill Heat Sports YouTube channel. We got our watch alongs for the last two weeks of the NFL season over there. So check us out. And of course, three dollars a month to become a, a extreme backer of the True Hill Heat Patreon page where we got additional content, the True Hill Heat Prediction Championship, plus more content and more prizes and stuff going on on Patreon coming up in 2023. Also, check out, if you got some time, our top 10 best WWE matches of 2022, the top 10 best AEW matches of 2022, top 10 best NJPW matches of 2022, and our top 20 best matches of 2022 video that just went up this week check all of those out on the trio heat youtube channel as well as our final interview of 2022 with former impact and roh world champion eddie edwards as well so you will see me and jimmy on ae ramble uh Yo, check out AE Rambo number 74, because it's probably up by the time we put this up anyway. So check that out as well. We recap AEW Dynamite New Year Smash. So for Jimmy Macaram, it is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom, SP3. This has been True Hill Heat's (laughs) top 10 best promos of 2022. We are signing off until next time.